Fitbit just released their latest model, the Fitbit Charge 4. So should you get this if you want to track your sleep? Well, that's the question I'm going to answer today. To summarize this video, I would say it's a pretty good sleep tracker, but it depends on a few factors if you should get it. So how did I check the accuracy of the Fitbit? Well, for 48 nights, I wore both the Fitbit and the professional sleep monitor to bed. This monitor is an EEG monitor that records my brain waves, and thereby we can actually predict the sleep stages. So by comparing the Fitbit to this professional EEG monitor, we can see how accurate the Fitbit is. Now those who are paying attention might be thinking, Rob, how were you able to check the Fitbit Charge 4 for 48 nights if it's just been released? Well, first, thanks for remembering my name. And second, I didn't actually check the Fitbit Charge 4. I actually tested the Fitbit Charge 3 for 48 nights. Now the reason I think this is not a problem is because they have the exact same design and the exact same sleep sensors in them. So for all intents and purposes, I think for us they are the same. Though in the new Charge 4 they did add a GPS sensor and some software updates like being able to control your Spotify. But for sleep purposes I really think it doesn't matter. But I'll be checking that in the next few weeks. But for now I think we can safely assume that the Fitbit Charge 3 and Charge 4 will give exactly the same sleep predictions. In this video I'll not actually address what each of the different sleep stages are. I previously made a video about the different sleep stages and also how the Fitbit and a professional EEG monitor predict them. You can find it linked either here or here. I also made a video where I actually checked the Fitbit Charge 2 prediction accuracy of the different sleep stages, which you can also find linked here. Now back to the test. Is the Fitbit any good at predicting your sleep? The way I actually look at that is by dividing each of those 48 nights into segments of 30 seconds. For each of those segments, the Fitbit and the sleep EEG monitor say, was I in light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep or awake? And then overall I can calculate how accurate the Fitbit was compared to this professional sleep EEG monitor. If you look at all 48 nights at the same time and take an average of that or something, you sort of get a feel for how the Fitbit does on an average night for me. And if it were to randomly assign a sleep stage to each of those 30 second intervals, you would expect it to get 1 out of 4 right by chance, so 25%. So I'd hope the Fitbit does a lot better than this. If you look at it in a bit more detail, I think about 60% of my night on average is light sleep. So if I were to assign light sleep to every 30 second interval over all my nights, I would get a prediction accuracy of 60%. Now let me try to clarify with an example. Say we were to divide our night up into 10 segments. So one here on the left through 10 here on the right. And for each of those segments, the professional EEG device says if I was awake, if I was in light sleep, deep sleep or REM sleep. Now the Fitbit tries to do something similar and then we compare the two. And in this case, we see that the Fitbit gets four of them wrong. One, two, three, four. So that means it has a prediction accuracy of 60%. But what I was trying to say is most of my night is light sleep. So six out of the 10 parts are light sleep. So if we were just to call the whole night light sleep, I would also get 60% right. And that's why I hope that the Fitbit gets a prediction accuracy higher than 60%. So let's have a look at the results. How does the Fitbit do over all 48 nights combined? Well, if you look at that, it gets an accuracy of 71.9%, which is pretty decent. I think a lot higher than the 60%. But of course, this is an average over all nights. So how does it perform if you look at all nights over time? Well, that's what you see depicted here. So there is some clear variation in the accuracy of the Fitbit over the different nights. There are some good nights, some bad nights, but overall it's pretty stable and does pretty well, I think. To see where the Fitbit makes mistakes, let's look at the total percentages for each of the sleep stages for both the Fitbit and the professional sleep EEG monitor. So here we see the percentages for each of the sleep stages for both the professional EEG monitor and for the Fitbit. And what we can see if we compare the two is that the Fitbit predicts a little bit too much deep sleep, not enough light sleep, uh, about the right amount of REM sleep and way too much time awake. Now to see where exactly the Fitbit makes its mistakes we can create something called a confusion matrix. Now a confusion matrix basically shows you which predictions between the Fitbit and the EEG monitor were the same and which one were different. And if we look at the matrix here, you see everything on the diagonal is what they predicted the same and everything off the diagonal is what they predicted differently. So I hope this confusion matrix isn't too confusing. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. <laughs> Don't judge me, I haven't had any human contact in like a month now. <laughs> okay, let's look at the confusion matrix in a bit more detail. As I mentioned before, everything on the diagonal was correctly predicted, which I marked green here. And we see, for instance, that 10.6% of my night was by, predicted by both the professional sleep EEG device and by the Fitbit to be deep sleep. But we also see some confusion here. 
So we see that about 8.1% of my night was predicted as light sleep by the professional sleep EEG device, but as deep sleep by the Fitbit. And the other way around, we also see that the Fitbit makes some mistakes. So where it was supposed to be deep sleep, 4.1% was actually light sleep. And another mistake we see happening very often is the confusion of light sleep and REM sleep by the Fitbit, though it generally gets this pretty okay. And finally, we also see that some of the light sleep is actually predicted as awake. So these are the sleep phases that the Fitbit confuses most often. Though it's not perfect, the Fitbit does a pretty decent job at predicting my sleep with an accuracy of about 72%. And if I remember correctly, that's also about what the Fitbit Charge 2 got in my previous test. Um, I guess it's not that surprising since they probably use the same type of sensors and the same algorithm. I'm actually doing another analysis now where I'm comparing four Fitbit devices, the Fitbit Ionic, the Fitbit Charge 2, 3 and 4. So if you want to see that, consider subscribing to my channel. Now before you go out and buy a Fitbit, or I guess in these times you stay in and buy a Fitbit, well before you go online and buy a Fitbit, there is one recurring problem I've had with the different Fitbits I've owned. And I have owned quite some Fitbits, here you see the latest Fitbit the Fitbit Charge 2. I also own the Fitbit Ionic, two more Fitbit Ionics, another Fitbit Charge 2, and a whole bunch of other fitness trackers. And I hear you wondering, Rob, why do you own three Fitbit Ionics and two Fitbit Charge 2s? Well, first of all, I'm a hoarder. I also own eight hats, three MacBooks, and one copy of Taylor Swift's latest album, Lover, and that's at least one too many of all those things. It is partially my fault that I own so many Fitbits, but the surplus of Fitbits is not really my fault. It is true, I like wearing Fitbits, tracking my health, playing with the data. I like comparing the different Fitbit models, which why at times my arms have looked like this. Getting back to my point, the real problem with Fitbits is that they tend to break. Those three Fitbit Ionics I showed you, all broken. The second Fitbit Charge 2, broken as well. And I've had the strap on my Fitbit Charge 2 break three times already. So you might be thinking, Rob, why do you keep buying Fitbits? Well, for one, apparently I'm a hoarder. And for two, they have really good warranty. All my breaks have happened within the warranty period and without much trouble I've gotten replacement parts or replacements for my Fitbits. And as an added bonus, the calls with those people from customer service make me feel a little bit less lonely during these times of self-isolation. Also, please share your thoughts in the comments below and let me know what you want me to make a video about in the future. Finally, liking and commenting on the video will let the YouTube algorithm know that you like the video and that it should show it to other people. Anyhow, thanks for watching and have a great day! At the moment I'm also working on a video looking at the accuracy of the Aura Ring, which is a sleep tracker that you wear on your finger, and the results are actually pretty surprising. Before I forget, to all girls living in Vienna, I'm still single! <laughs> <laughs>